Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the video. Let us discuss further the ESRAM of the Xbox One. A couple of games developers, a Terrathon Software as well as Respawn Interactive, have actually given comments on developing for the ESRAM. Now, once again, I'd like to apologise. I am still slightly ill, so if my voice goes a bit strange, I can only apologise. Sore throat and runny nose. And in addition to that... I've done this as an article as well, and I'd recommend you guys check it out because I've got some references in there. In fact, at the very top, it says, although, as we previously discussed, click here for a detailed report, and I'd recommend you click on the detailed report if you've not already done so. And there's a lot of information there regarding exactly what the ESRAM is and how it works, as well as some of the challenges. But anyway, on with the show. So, overall... Theoretically, the PS4 and Xbox One, if you were just to look at the very basic specifications, they look very similar. Both are using the AMD Jaguar CPU, both are using the GCN cores, and of course there are a few changes here and there regarding to, you know, the clock speeds, that type of thing, but the basic premise of the console seems very similar. It's only when you dig in deeper and you look at the actual difference in T-flop computing power between the PS4 and Xbox One, as well as the memory um, system of both consoles that you actually start to see where things start to diverge. However, there's a very good chance that the Xbox One's GPU isn't actually causing the problem. And we've discussed this previously, but it seems to be backed up as both Terraform Software as well as Respawn have uh, kind of hinted at further. So, we'll start out with a Terraform who create an engine known as C4. Now, they don't exactly have the best working history with Microsoft anyway, but still, they said, if we do port the engine to the Xbox One, it will be unfortunate that we still have to deal with things such as ESRAM in this new generation of consoles. Many of the methods established for the 360 still apply, and they'll provide us with some solutions. And that was uh, stated by the co-founder, Eric Lengel. And moving on for just a moment, let's speak uh, about comments from Respawn Interactive. Now, Respawn, in a very short interview, my lad, but still, have said, we've been experimenting on making it higher f and lower. This is, by the way, in regards to the uh, resolution of Titanfall, which, of course, has just seen a release on the consoles. And they said, one of the big tricks is how much ESRAM we're going to to use and so we're thinking or not using uh, hardware MSAA and instead using FXAA to make it so we don't have to use the local uh, this larger render target. We're going to experiment. The target is either 1080p in non anti aliased or 900p with FXAA. So we're trying to optimize. We don't want to have to give up anything for high resolution. So far we're not putting 100% happy with how any of the options and we're still working on it. Now, FXAA is definitely a lot cheaper in terms of performance usage, but as the developers have stated, it's also a lot more expensive in terms of um, memory use, which is primarily the bigger issue. Now, the good part of, or sorry, the good point of all this is that, quite simply put, it definitely seems to be an issue with the amount of memory available on the ESRAM that's causing these issues and it also highlights that even if the GPU of the Xbox One was significantly faster, let's say as powerful as the PS4, likely the ESRAM would still cause the bottleneck because quite simply put, it's reducing the speed that data can be sent to the GPU. Now of course there are ways around this which developers are starting to learn. Uh, tiled resources, of course, is one such way, but it's certainly not going to be the only method. Deferred rendering is certainly another option, which, as the name would imply, simply defers or basically waits um, to apply certain graphical effects until the second rendering pass. And so that's not to say that the ESRAM will never be worked around, but it certainly seems to be a significant hurdle. It's very interesting to hear Respawn actually comment on this because they actually received quite some flack actually regarding the ESRAM resolution. Now, you may remember that I actually got a couple of exclusive comments from Respawn regarding the resolution and there were some comments going around where 
um, they actually got misquoted and said that, you know, they were looking to make 1080p the target resolution, and that's not really the case. They're basically just trying to make this thing look as good as possible, and personally speaking, I'm unsure if I'd like to see 1080p without, ali without any anti-aliasing at all. I mean, hmm, them jaggers, they're not really ideal. So I think 900p with FXAA would be the better option. Unfortunately, as we know from, say, my own graphical analysis and so on, FXAA does present some issues by itself. Predominantly, it's not the cleanest form of anti-aliasing. And it can put some smooth edges and some blurry textures in there, that type of thing. Now, I feel that this isn't so much a point on the Xbox One's resolution regarding, say, the PS4, more a great indication of some of the challenges and a great explanation of why games developers are having problems. Because, you know, from the perspective of the owners of the console, a lot of the time they just don't really care that the system is harder to develop for. They just want the best performance possible. And of course, a lot of the time this can lead to quite a lot of outrage. Um, we've seen how it seems to be impacting the media right now, and there definitely seems to be a greater level of demand from fans to actually really see and for developers to tell the truth and explain these different issues. Anyway, that's just about it for this particular video. I'd like to speak about this a bit further. Now, we do have a GDC coming up pretty soon, which I think is going to be one of the more interesting uh, conferences of the year, simply because, well, we're going to be hearing a lot of new technologies over the next couple of months, I think. And, of course, we're hearing about virtual reality. We're going to be hearing about um, Gorilla's explanation on exactly why they decided to go with temporal reprojection uh, and in Killzone Shadowfall, much more as well. So it's going to be a very interesting experience, I feel. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.